In this video, we're going to be focusing on the concept of economic growth in macroeconomics. We'll define economic growth, we'll talk about the sources of economic growth, and distinguish between recovery in the ADAS model and economic growth in the ADAS model, as well as the distinction between short-run economic growth and long-run economic growth. Let's start with the definition of economic growth. This is a term that certainly you have heard of, but you may not know technically how to define it. Economic growth can be defined as an increase in the actual and the potential output of a nation over time. Recall from earlier lessons that output is measured using the figure of gross domestic product or GDP. Therefore, we can actually measure economic growth. The measurement of economic growth is the change in a country's GDP over time. So I can put two different levels of GDP into a simple equation here. Let's call it GDP2. And we can subtract the GDP of an earlier time period. We'll call that GDP1 and multiply the result by 100 to get the what we call growth rate. A country's GDP growth rate is the percentage by which its GDP increases between two periods of time. So we know economic growth is defined as an increase in a country's GDP over time, both its actual and its potential GDP. Let's talk about the sources of economic growth. Economic growth can be the result of several factors. Anything that leads to an increase in the quantity of factors of production in a country. Now recall that factors of production refers to land, labor, and capital. So anything that increases the quantity of land, labor, and capital in a country will increase that country's actual and potential output over time and lead to economic growth. So let's break it down a little bit. What are some factors that can cause an increase in the land, labor, or capital in a country? What are some things that can actually cause economic growth? Well, a big one is technology. New technologies make land more productive. For example, agricultural technologies like farming equipment and pesticides and industrial fertilizers. These increase the quantity and the quality of fertile land in a country, making land resources more productive and increasing a country's potential and actual output. Labor is another factor of production that can be increased through population growth. Population growth or immigration. Of course, immigration is a factor that leads to population growth. Immigrants increase the actual and potential output of a country. They actually increase the size of the labor force, therefore increasing the country's potential level of output. And capital is the technology used in the production of goods and services. Capital makes workers more productive, therefore increasing the potential output of workers. What can lead to an increase in capital? This is what we call investment. We've already learned what investment is. It is spending on new equipment or technology or machinery or manufacturing tools by firms. So these are just some of the factors that can lead to economic growth in a country. New technologies, increased population through immigration or higher birth rates, investment in new technologies. All of these things, one thing these things all lead to is an increase in productivity meaning the amount of output possible per unit of input. More technology, better technology, more investment, better capital make workers more productive, increase in a country's actual and potential output of goods and services over time. These are the main sources of economic growth. Now in a minute we're going to be looking at our graph and talk about how to illustrate economic growth in the graph. As we do that, let's make a distinction here between two concepts that are commonly confused with one another among economic students. And that's the distinction between recovery and growth. Recovery, we know what this term is. We learned it when we studied the business cycle graph. Recovery is what a country experiences as its output increases following a recession. So recovery is when output, when GDP increases following a recession. Let's do a quick illustration on our graph here. Assume that the United States experiences a demand deficient recession. Aggregate demand falls, causing output to decrease. We'll call this AD1 to a level below full employment. We'll call that Y1. Our full employment level of output is where long run aggregate supply is vertical. We'll call that YFE. The decrease in aggregate demand causes a recessionary gap. This is all stuff we've studied in previous videos. That's the difference between Y1 and YFE. That's our recessionary gap. 
Now, if this country, if the United States experiences an increase in aggregate demand following this recession, is it experiencing economic growth or is it experiencing a recovery? Let's have a look. Let's say that aggregate demand increases once again, not all the way back to where it was before, but to a level closer to full employment. This country now sees its GDP increase to Y2, accompanied by demand pull inflation as price level increases. I forgot to label my price level here. We'll call that PL1. Now price level increases to PL2. We have some inflation and we have an increase in output to Y2. Is this economic growth? Well, looking back at our definition of economic growth, we have to see both an increase in actual output and potential output for it to be considered economic growth. A recovery from Y1 to Y2 does cause the former. It causes an increase in the United States actual output, but it does not increase the nation's potential output. Potential output remains determined by the long run aggregate supply in the country, which says that the potential output is YFE, the full employment level of output. The United States has not experienced economic growth if it experiences a recovery from a recession. So that's an important distinction when talking about economic growth. Economic growth requires that both actual and potential output increase. So the recovery phase of the business cycle looks a little bit like economic growth because GDP is increasing, actual output is increasing, but it's not economic growth because the country's potential output does not change when it recovers from a recession. So let's look at one more scenario here. I'm gonna clean up my graph and we'll look at a different scenario that does show a type of economic growth. Now let's move on to illustrating what economic growth does look like in the ADAS graph. Let's start with a situation in which aggregate demand increases due to, say, a decrease in taxation, which increases households' disposable incomes and causes consumption to rise. Is an increase in aggregate demand alone an example of economic growth? Let's look at the effect that that has. Output increases in the short run from YFE to Y1, and there is demand pull inflation due to greater demand for the nation's goods and services from PL1 to PL2. Does actual output increase? In fact, it does. Actual output increases in the short run to a level beyond full employment. We have an inflationary gap in this country, so it meets the first criteria for economic growth. However, this is what we call short run economic growth. It is not the economic growth that really matters. It increases output only in the short run as the country experiences an inflationary gap. So short run economic growth is when only AD increases. This is not going to achieve a long run increase in actual and potential output. As we learned in our previous video, demand pull inflation in the short run will translate into higher wages and costs of production in the long run. And this economy will self correct as rising production costs lead to a reduction in short run aggregate supply. An increase in AD alone does not cause long run economic growth. It creates short run growth, but in the long run, the economy will return to full employment as rising resource costs and wages reduce the actual level of output back to the full employment level. So short run economic growth, it looks a lot like economic growth, once again, because GDP increases to a level beyond full employment. However, this is not long run economic growth. Long run economic growth requires, once again, an increase in both actual and potential output. So let's clean up our graph one more time and we'll look at a scenario in which long run economic growth is achieved and how that looks in the ADAS graph. So finally, let's talk about how long run economic growth looks in the ADAS graph. Let's say that there is an increase in population in the United States. Immigration and higher birth rates lead to an increase in the number of people in the country. Over time, this will mean a larger labor force, more workers available. An increase in the size of the workforce makes for cheaper workers because there's more people competing for labor in the economy, increasing short run aggregate supply. So that's one consequence of an increased labor force, lower wages and reduced cost of production. However, an increase in the size of the labor force is also going to drive up the potential level of output because there's more workers contributing to the country's economic activity. So we're going to see an increase in long run aggregate supply as well to LRAS1. Now we're starting to see that this is more than just short run economic growth or a recovery from a recession. An increase in the size of the labor force is also, not surprisingly, going to increase the total level 
of demand in the economy. There's more consumers over time as the population grows. So we're also going to see aggregate demand increase. What we end up with is an increase in all three curves. We therefore see an increase in the full employment level of output. There is greater demand across the economy, greater supply across the economy, and an increased level of potential output and actual output. So how do we illustrate long-run economic growth in the ADAS model? Well, what have we shown here? We've shown an increase in all three curves. Potential output increases, therefore LRAS shifts out. Costs of production decrease in the short run because there's a greater supply of workers. There is also increased aggregate demand because there's going to be more consumers in the economy or higher wages because of greater productivity in the case of increased capital or technology. So as a result, we end up with a situation in which all three curves have shifted out, the actual and potential level of output increase to a new full employment equilibrium. Short-run economic growth is achieved only when AD increases, or an increase in AS as a result of a temporary decrease in resource costs such as lower energy prices. However, long-run economic growth is only achieved when there's an increase in the actual and the potential level of output as a result of an increase in the quantity of land, labor, or capital in the economy. Here we go. One step at a time.